Hey, what's up folks today? Welcome to the channel. Uh, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Today we're looking at the uh, the higher time frame and we want to take objects from the higher time frame, move them to the lower time frame. Moving any object is, you know, it's it's neither here nor there, but moving moving important objects is 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 very important. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to take the basic the basic tenet. We're going to take a basic object and we're going to move it from the higher time frame to the lower time frame. Now this is going to take me a little bit of time to get through because this is this is not a very simple task. There's a lot to it. All right, but so if you look here, you see that um, we just kind of created something. You know, people do these fair value gaps. Anyway, we're saying that um, we're looking over three bars, right? So we're looking at our current low. We're skipping the um, the bar in the middle, and then we're looking at the the second bar back, right? So if this current low is higher than that high the second bar ago, then we say that space within there is the fair value gap, right? Okay, so in that space right there, I'm gonna do a global position. That space right there is this space right here, right? We just, we did a global position. Okay, so if we find it on the five minute time frame, we want to identify it on the 15 second time frame or the lower time frame, right? Instead of having to look here and look there and see is it the same spot and all this kind of stuff. Plus, we might also want to do something with this same, uh, the same value over here on this chart. So, what I had to do was I created the indicator, I created the object over here, and then it essentially got sent uh, by a global dictionary to whatever because it's a global dictionary. But this chart over here picked it up, and so when we go and we let's see, did I verify that? Okay, now it's verified. Okay, so once I verified that in my development environment, now it's running. Okay, so you see here, whatever the five minute, um, the five minute fair value gap is over here, it populates over here. All these same places, it populates in these same places. Okay, now remember, this is the this is coming off of the five minute time frame, so it won't have the same um, anchoring to bars that it does. Uh, on the lower time frame. Okay, so this is a little bit harder of a presentation. This is, um, and this took me a little bit of time, but I'm gonna start from scratch and see if we can get through it. Okay, so we're going to start an indicator and we're gonna call it uh, YouTube five fair value gap five minute. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna create the fair value gap on the five minute time frame. So we need to draw the object. Um, and so to make it a little bit easier, I found that it was uh, easier to use data points to create the object. So typically I'll just go ahead and create the object within the within the call function of the object, I'll just create it there. But I find it a little bit easier to go ahead and create the data points outside the object and then bring the um, the, the date time points, the, uh, the anchor points, DO points, create them outside the object and then bring them in when you're calling the object. So I'll show you. Using EL system, using EL system, we're gonna do collections as well using EL system collections because we're gonna be using a, uh, a collection, which is the global dictionary. We need to use drawing because we're drawing objects, drawing objects because we're drawing objects. All right, and variable, we're gonna have one uh, called rectangle. This would be fair value gap, uh, FEG, that'll be null. And then I'm um, not sure what else I need for right now. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll say, um, we'll look for our condition. So. Yeah, let's have one called um, condition one. We'll just call it new gap. Because remember, we want our variables to make sense for what we're doing. So new gap will be um, if our current low is higher than the high uh, one, two bars ago. If the low is greater than the high two bars ago. Now remember, you don't have to write that out. You can just use L and H. 
Okay, so let's verify that, see if we have any errors. If uh, we don't need the if here because we're starting, because we're running this on every bar, the condition is equal to that. Um, okay, so no issues there. New gap, low, does that? Okay, so, and then I'll say if new gap, then begin plot one, we're gonna plot the low, and then end. So we'll come over here, YouTube, five very, uh, gotta find it. YouTube fair value gap five minute right there. Okay, now let's just drag this up here from that subgraph one. I'm gonna put it there. Okay, so these are the areas that we do have the fair value gap showing up. We'll make that across, we can make it larger. Uh, let's make it a point, color, red, that. Okay, so these are the areas where that actually turned out to be true. Okay, so this, this low is higher than this high, you know, skipping this bar, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the draw the rectangle. Okay, so not only do we want to plot this, but we also want to draw a rectangle. So draw rec. That's going to be a method which we call anytime that that happens. Method void draw rec begin end. But we need some variables here because we're going to draw the rectangle. And again, I said I want to. So typically, what I might do is I'll have um, the rectangle is called feg. FEG equals rectangle dot create. And then I'll go ahead and put my uh, bar number point or my DT point right here, right? You put the first one and then you put the second one. Okay, close it. And then you do drawing objects dot add. And then you put your FEG right there. Okay, and then it'll draw it. All right, so you can do it that way. And what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're going to our first data point I'm gonna do it this way and then I'll show you just uh, the, the I don't wanna say the better way, but the other way to do it to help make this easier. All right, so we're gonna have a date time point. Now create, and so we need the date time of bar. It's gonna be like a date time class, and then we need the price. So the date time is gonna be from one, two bars ago. So it'll be bar date time of two bars ago, and then we need the price, which will be the high of two bars ago. And then for our second point, we're going to use the bar date time of the current bar that we're on. And then we're going to use the uh, the low of the current bar that we're on. Okay. So that's our uh, first point. And then this is our second point. And then close off the rectangle creation. Verify it. And you see these fair value gaps come up here. Okay, but you see how these two come up? This one comes up and then this one comes up. I don't really want that many fair value gaps on here. So I only want these fair value gaps to show up if, um, you know, from the beginning, from when it comes under the nine pair moving average. And then as it starts moving up, as it gets over the nine pair moving average, I don't need to keep calling out fair value gaps because sometimes it's just, uh, that's just momentum. So we only want to get a new gap if we, um, dip back under the nine period moving average. So I'm gonna have a variable called um, trip flag and we'll make it false. And then so if we do get a new gap, then we're gonna trip the flag to, um, to true, which just means that the flag has been tripped. But now if the price moves over the nine period moving average, we'll trip it back to false. So um, let's see if, um, I'll say the low, if the low is, I need to be under, if the low is less than the nine period moving average, uh, then trip flag equals false. Okay. So this can only be caught. Now, once I hit verify, it doesn't change anything because I'm still plotting and drawing rectangles only based on the condition of new gap. So I need to also say, and uh, trip flag equals false. Now, when I verify it, now I'm only getting these lower ones. And then once the price comes up, moves over the nine pair moving average, um, it 
It's not giving you any new ones, but then as it moves under the nine period moving average again, it can trip that flag and give you a new, uh, a new fair value gap. Okay, so now what I what I was telling you about is uh, here these DT points right here. I'm going to pull these out and then I'm going to make them individual points. Okay, so I'm going to pull these out and so I'm going to have variables within the method. So these are these are local because they'll everything that happens will be done within here. It'll be sent out within here. So these uh, variables will be the first one will be um, a time point. It'll be a yeah DT point. Okay, and then it's going to be I'm gonna call it B point, which is beginning point. And remember, you don't put initial value there. DT point, you just put the type of the variable and then you, the name. So DT point and then end point. Or you know what? I think I like start because that's what we actually use for the uh, properties. Start point, S point, and then E point, end point. Okay, so the start point is going to be new date time. Okay, and the S point is going to be equal to all right and then e point is going to be a new date time as well and then e point is equal to the second one all right my colon okay so now in here so now that I have those defined, now all I have to do is just put them here. So the start point and the end point. New date time. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, because I didn't make this a date time. This is not a date time. I may still need to use date time. I forget how I did it. We're going to fumble through it here in a minute. But uh, these are S points, so all we're doing is just going straight to creating the the um, date time point. So we ought to be able to do it like that. Now I'm gonna hit verify. Now we're using these um, the start point and the end point using the DT point dot create, and we're just putting that dropping that right into the rectangle creation. All right, what did I do? Delete delete okay so now that i have these here i have the rectangles drawn now what i need to essentially do is i need to send this information to this chart so how are we going to send it we're going to send it using a global dictionary which is a dictionary that is allowed to be shared amongst charts so for that like i said we need the collections here and then we need a global dictionary class which will be uh global dictionary and then we'll call it gd for global dictionary gd and then rec it's going to hold the rectangles okay and now we do need to declare an initial value here. All right. And then we're going to go and because this is an object, we need to define, we need to bring the object onto the chart at the beginning of the um, program. So once begin end, we're going to have that GD rec, that global dictionary, and it's going to be equal to global dictionary. Um, and we're going to need to use create actually create and then you see there you got two options one is just creating it the second one gives you the ability to share and create a name to share it with okay so we're going to share it yes that's true that's a boolean and then the sharing name we're going to call it um i'll call it youtube youtube uh fvg okay so once we created that global dictionary now we can use it up here all right, so what we're going to do, so now this is the interesting part because we need to send those values to the um, to the other chart. So now this is where it slows down a little bit. All right, this is where it slows down a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is when we get to this bar, we're creating the rectangle. And then, so on that bar, we're creating the rectangle. From there, we're just gonna go ahead and send the data. Okay, so we're gonna send the first point and the second point. Um, and the global dictionary has to have a key. It has two elements, 
a, um, a key and the value. Okay, so we need to set up a key. The key is going to be the bar date time that it sends it on because that's unique. That's only going to happen one time. Um, well, um, because we're not doing anything with intra, intra bars or anything like that, inside bars, we're only doing it when the bar stops. So that only bar only stops one time, right? So we're going to say um, if gdirect contains so we're checking to see if it contains um the bar date time bar date time um dot to string yeah because this is going to be a string bar date time and so that string will become essentially the key for the rectangle okay so if it contains that um, I guess then we can return. Um, else, if it doesn't contain that, then we're going to go ahead with adding it. Adding, what is the key? The key is bar date time dot to string. And then what is going to be the value that we're going to put in there? Well, the value that we put in there needs to be the bar needs to be the um this dt point and this dt point unfortunately you can't send objects you can't send objects so we need to send the points so we need to create a key or a um a list of points that we're going to send so um we need to have another variable. It's called the, it's a string and it's gonna be called the points. Oh, that's already a variable, easy language reserve word. So we're gonna um, points, point string. We'll call it point string. Okay, and so point string is gonna be equal to, it's gonna be a, um, it's going to have four points. So it's going to have the first bar date time, the first bar date time, the bar date time, and then it's going to have the price. And then the second one is going to be the bar date time. And then it's going to be the price. All right. So let's see if we can pull that from here. Okay. So the first one will be the start point bar date time, which will be s point dot date time of bar. And I think that is a object. El date time x. I think we're going to assign it like that. So we took the 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 dt point, and then we found out what the date time of the bar is. And then we're converting that, or we're um, we want to get the date and the time, so we got to use el date time x. All right, and now that's going to be a number. That's a, actually, and this is what this is what I had a lot of trouble with when I was putting this together. Okay, so I thought el date time x the way I typically use it, I use it as a double, and I thought that it would only have like um, you know wouldn't even really need any um, any decimal places, but El date time x is actually a Julius. It's, it's 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 a double, yes, but it's a. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. It's a, it's of type Julian. So it can have a lot of decimal places behind it to, to properly pull the. Double. It can have a lot of decimal places behind it to add, to properly pull. The, the 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 time the date is pretty easy but let me see if i can find here kind of help you understand okay you see here el date time x it's a double but you see how many decimal places it can have so when i was trying to send my information over i was sending it asking it I think I told it to round to zero places. 
And then I think I told it around to two places. Well, either way, you can see here that to get the proper time, it can be that right there is two, four, five places. But when I did a print function to figure out what I was doing wrong, it, it went out 16 places. It actually went out 14 places. So I, I said, it will go out 16 places. So that is, um, that is something that you really got to understand that with this being a double, that it's not just like uh, dollars and cents where it go, only goes out two decimal places. It goes out many decimal places in order to get the proper, um, proper values. So when you do, uh, when you do EL date time X, because this is a number, we need to convert it to a string in order to, um, in order to put it into, well, Yeah, and because otherwise, you know, concatenating and all that kind of stuff, um, we need to make it into a string in order to send it. So, I mean, to send it with uh, on multiple, to send multiple things at one time, we need to put it in a string so it can just kind of read it. Uh, if we're only using just a, a Boolean or just an integer or just a double, then we could just send just that number or just that variable. But since we want to send multiple things at one time, we need to um, we need to convert it to a string so we can add it. All right, so s point date time bar el date time x dot to string. Okay, and that's our first point. And then we need to have a comma because we're going to end up pulling this up using a token list. So we want to have it um, separated by commas. We'll come on down here. Now the second one, the first one we got was the date time of the bar. The second one we need is the price, which is going to be s point dot uh, dot price to string plus. Okay, and I'm actually doing this a little bit differently than I did the uh, first one, so I feel like this is a lot better actually. Date time of bar dot uh, el date time ex dot to string I know I know I know it's a lot of hard work but um, again nothing's gonna be given to you guys all right so now that's our last one and then yeah so we have the date time of the bar we have the price we have the date time of the bar we have the price for both the start point start point end point end point so that should be our string called point string. That will happen when this bar happens. So it'll happen at the end of this bar. It'll give you all that data for this current rectangle. All right, so now we're gonna send that. We've already got our key here, which is this last bar, which is the date time of that last bar. All right, so now we're going to, um, yeah, put point string right here. All right. I don't think I have any issues. Let's see. So yes, we're checking to make sure that um, if it does already contain something, which it shouldn't because we haven't got to this bar yet, but if it does contain something that we're gonna return, we're gonna get out of this method altogether or else we're going to um, add the uh, current bar date time as a key to the dictionary using the point string as our um, element. All right, verify. All right, so we do have an issue here. Oh, we need a plus there. So we need a plus there and we need a plus here. Okay, verify, no issues, very good. Okay, so we've already set up our global dictionary to uh, true to share and then YouTube YFG to uh, as a share name. So now we need to make another one which will receive. Okay, so and actually, I'm just going to make this as a uh, as a show me. Why? Uh, YouTube. Uh, fair value gap. Receive. Yeah, receiver. Okay. All right. Now. We do need to draw, so we need the drawing. We need to, and so we need drawing objects. We we're, we'll be using the global dictionary, so we need to use the collections. We'll be using a token list to pull the, the 
the string list from the dictionary and then convert it. So we need to use all those things. Let's go ahead and get those namespaces in here. Yo system using uh, el system collections for the global dictionary using el system drawing and then also uh, drawing objects of course all right and then for the token list we'll be using ts data dot uh, common I think that's the one that uses okay so variable we're going to have the global dictionary as we just also go with grec no need that token list what you call it t list no um we'll have i think that's it for right now all right so we know that we once need to go ahead and bring the global dictionary over from the other chart so g rect is equal to global dictionary dot create chair it's true and then the name it's got to be the name from the other one Okay, and that name was YT FEG. Okay. So now we pulled that over. Okay, once we need to go ahead and hmm. Well, we don't need to pull the debt. So typically when I'm using vectors and I'm using string writers and everything like that, I gotta pull all the data in first. But because the global dictionary is shared, we don't have to pull it in. We just, on every bar, we just need to be checking to see if there is a key associated with that bar date time. Okay, so on every bar, so on every bar, we're gonna uh, check for FEG. Okay, so, um, and that, that'll be a, um, a method, method void check for FEG, begin. And so on every bar, we're going to check in that global dictionary. So how do we check um, if grec.contains bar date time dot to string? Then, so if it does contain it, then we want to do what? We want to pull the information from the dictionary. So how how we're going to pull? I mean, we know how we pull it. But what are we going to put it into? We're going to put it into that token list. All right. Before we use the token list, let's make sure that we also have already token list equals new token list. We we'll pulled it onto the chart. So t list dot clear. We're going to clear it, and then we'll add to the token list. So add whatever is in that global dictionary at that bar date time. So what's in grect? at uh, bar date time dot to string da, 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 da. cancel that all right so now now that we have that stuff in the token list we need to whenever you're using something again you have to check it so we need to check to make sure that what's in the token list actually is the right thing has the right number of components now the number of components that we put in the token list was the um, start, um, bar date time and price, ending point, bar date time and price. So we have four. So if token list dot count, so the number of things on the count is greater than or equal to four, then begin. So we're going to take what's in the token list and we need to now decipher it. We need to pull it apart. So this is how we're going to create our, our rectangle. So we do need other variables in here and one of them is going to be the uh, DT point just like we did before and this is a new chart so we can use the same variables E point um, so S point it's beginning start point and DT point E point is end point All right okay so let's take uh let's take start uh start point dot start point dot time of bar date time of bar i 
I think... Like I said, sometimes you gotta go ahead and create these points. So it'd be like S point equals new date time point. Well, it's not, yeah, new date time point. Uh, I'm only gonna do that first. S point equals new date time point. And then we'll have E point equals new date time point. Okay, and now that we have it on the chart, now we're gonna say S point dot date time bar is equal to the date time bar from before, right? And it was the first position. Okay, so it'll be T list of zero. And now that's coming out as a string. So we're gonna put a parentheses at the end because we're gonna do a string to num. Okay, and the string is this. This came out of a string. When it comes out of token list, it's a string. All right, so we have the date time of the bar. Okay, and now we need the price of the bar. S point dot price equals what? It's also gonna come out as a string. So string to num is gonna be T list of that first one. Okay, now we need to do the endpoint. Endpoint dot date time. A bar is equal to string to num. Same thing, now it's T list of the, that third position, which is the second index. Okay, and then endpoint dot price is equal to string to num of that last index, which is three, it's that fourth position. Okay, so now we should have all our, our points on here. Let's just verify before we get ahead of ourselves. All right, DT point, D point, we did it twice. All right, uh, party time to string, it needs empty parentheses when you, um, when you do that function, uh, call it to string. All right, G rec, cannot convert object to string. All right, what is it saying? It's saying that we're taking whatever's in G rec, whatever's in that global dictionary, at that, at this key, we're taking it. But remember, when you come out of a vector or a dictionary, you have to say what it is. We know it went in as a string, but when it comes out, we still have to say it's a string as type. So it's coming out of the dictionary as type string. Now we verify, all right, S point, DT point. Okay, so DT point is not created, right? So let's go and right click on that, see what it says. Date time of bar, the methods. See, to me, it says, does create. It says DT point, dot create, create the date time and the double. Okay, well, um, I tell you what then, let's do this. S point is equal to uh, S point is equal to DT point dot create. I'm just gonna do it all at one time. Okay, so that first point, which is the date time of the bar, we're gonna take that, we're gonna copy it and paste it there. That's the bar date time. All right, and then the price will be a double. Copy that, paste that. Okay, and that is our start point. End point is going to also be dt point dot create. And it's going to be copy, paste, and copy, paste. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just comment all this out. That way, if I do end up needing it, then it's there. Okay, so now we're going to verify. String to number. That's that's what it was, right? Um, because this is a...
it's it's expecting a it's expecting a date time class right here it's expecting a date time class that's why i did it this way though because this gives you the date time of the bar all right let's let's comment this one out <laughs> and go back here and let's just not do those that's on double to date time Now there is something ill date to date time. Okay, okay, I see here. Um I told you this was the most complicated part about it. Alright, so I know what I ended up doing, but like I said, I I was doing something different here and I felt like it was I felt like it made sense and that, that would work. But however, looks like this is uh this is requiring a This is requiring a date time. And so let's just go up here and give it a date time. Okay, so we're gonna give it a, a date time, D, um, start time, and then we're gonna have a date time point, which would be end time. Okay, and so what we're gonna say is uh, date time is equal to date We'll say new date time. I know you do have to start this one off like this. And then end time is equal to new. And I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. So guys, if you if you know what the easier way is, by all means, put it in the comments. Um, so DT uh, dot, now that we got a new date time on here. Well, it's not DT, it's start time. Start time. Okay, start time dot yield date time x, which is what we pulled. We actually pulled the date time of the bar. Is there a date time here? Okay, when we went back here, what did we send over? We sent over the date time as EL date time X. Okay, so when we received it, we're going to receive it as EL date time X. So uh, ST dot EL date time X is equal to that first uh, that first value. I just had to do it like this. Okay, and now the EL date time X should pull up both the date and the time. Okay, and then we'll do the ET in uh, time dot EL date time X. Is equal to string to number of that third position. Which is two. Okay, and now that we have these date times in here, we're going to create the start point and the end point. And now this start point, the date time should be equal to start time. Because that's a date time. This is a, this is a date time class, right? And it's asking for date time, so let's let's try it. Let's try it that way. And then the start time price is going to be this price. That's fine. And then we just take this and we make this end time. Okay. Now we uh, verify. No issues there except for check fair value gap. This is a method, so we need to open close parentheses. No issues. 
Okay, so uh, we still haven't drawn it yet though. So now we need to take those values and draw. So the we need a we need a rectangle. Uh, so we'll put here. We'll have rectangle is rect. Okay, so rect is equal to um, rectangle dot create. And so we need the first point, the second point, the first point is start point, and then the second point is end point. And then we need to drawing objects uh, dot add, and we're going to add rect. All right, verify. Let's come over here and add that to, <laughs> over here and see what we get. All right. Uh, this was a show. We made it a show me. YouTube fair value get receiver. Okay. Now, what it, did it add it? Okay, it added something else. Function test. All right. There's the receiver. All right. It didn't like something. Okay. Object reference not set to the instance of an object. Okay. So uh, we got a couple objects. One object is rectangle that we, before we drew it, did we call it? Yes, we did. We, we defined it. I mean, all right. Um, end point and let's see start time, excuse me, start. Um, yeah, start time, date time. We did bring that on, declare it that. The start point, I think it told us that we didn't need to do a new start point. But other than that, we've used T list, which we did initialize token list at the beginning of the chart. We declared token list and we called it we call the global dictionary. Yeah, the only thing I can think is maybe the the date time points, which we have there, but it doesn't like that. Unless it wants us to do DT point dot create and close that. But I'm pretty sure that you have to put something in there. Yeah. You know what? We took the... We've got the date time of the bar. And we did the price. For S point but we still didn't really call it as a complete point. Yeah, we should, we should have done, we should have called it like this S point equals DT point dot create, and then put in there date time bar and then price date time bar and then price and then endpoints equals dt point that create um, in time and then the price Okay, now we don't need these up here, and then we technically don't need these here, so these would be commented out. Don't want to comment them out, so I got to do it manually. All right, now when I verify, it's looking for another. Oh, okay. One, two, uh, one, two. Okay, 
Verify. All right, now let's go back over here. Pull it back up. Boom, it's working. I mean, it's trying to do something. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, so I know that was a little rusty. That was a little rusty. I know, but again, I am not a master at this. I am an amateur programmer. I'm, I'm not um, a professional programmer by any means. I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. I'm just a guy who enjoys programming, who enjoys looking at the market, and I intend to find an edge in the market. So until I do that, I'll be on here making videos every day. Um, you know, it'll kind of showcase the process and the progress, but um, not, not, uh, don't, don't expect for anything glamorous. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So the main takeaway here is that to create that, to create this date time point, we need to definitely put in a date time type. The, um, we need to put in a date time object, not just a, not just a, like a date time number. We need a date time object. So key take away, um, DT point will need a date time object. And you can do that using bar date time of, you know, how many ever bars ago you can use, you can do that by using a date time class, but you need to put a date time in here. And now, like I said, how we pulled it over from the other indicator from the other chart is we pulled over the EL date time X. We pulled that over as a double, as a Julian, we pulled that over, but we couldn't just drop it in here. That's what I was trying to do. I was just trying to drop it in here. We have to take this value. We have to convert it um, or it, it has to be pulled to a new date time point. And that date time point, we can assign that Julian. We can assign that double, the EL date time X. We can assign it to that start point using this, uh, this method, this function. And once we assign it in, now it does the calculations and it spits out that, you know, this is the object. So essentially we have to create this object of the date time. And once we create the object, we can define the parameters using that double, using that Julian. Okay. All right. So that's, that's, that's the takeaway. That's, that's the takeaway is in order to create this, uh, this date time point, you have to use a date time object and to create a date time object, you have to first create it and then you have to define the parameters of the date time object, you know? Okay. All right. That's it. So we ought to be able to go to, um, why do we have to go to like 15 second time frame? Now this is going to be, this is going to work a little bit differently depending on what you're doing, because if you put a time frame on here that doesn't have this, this point here, however you did it, if you went by like seven seconds or something like that, and then it didn't end on one of these bar date time points, then it wouldn't plot it. So you kind of have to this, this here is just an idea to get it transferred, but in order to figure out exactly what works in your situation, depending on what time frames you use and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, you have to be careful. So let me, let me put seven seconds, which isn't divisible by 60. Let's see what we get. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah. I was going to say, I might have to swallow my words. Yeah. So nothing... There's a couple that shows up, but I mean, you know, eventually it's going to, you know, have a, um, when you divide it, you, you'll get, um, you'll get the right number, but not, not on every time you see here, this one here didn't show up. 
this one here didn't show up, right? But if I break it down to the 15 second time frame, uh, 15 seconds is divisible each time by 60, right? So it's always going to have a bar on the um, on the end of this bar because the end of this bar happens at uh, every five minutes. So on the on the top of the minute. Okay, so here that one worked. Here that one worked. Here that one worked. Here that one worked. All right. So you see, so forth and so on. All right, this is this was a good one. Yeah, 50 minutes. And like I said, a lot of this was me explaining it to you, but I moved through this fairly quickly up until the very end. Took me about another eight minutes to kind of fumble through that. But this this is a lot just to get these just to get these boxes moved from one chart to the next. This was a lot. Um, and I'm I'm an amateur programmer, but I'm not bad either. I'm not bad. So uh, I hope this helps somebody. I, I, I truly do because I wouldn't have been able to do like anything like this in the past. Um, so anyway, um, by all means, subscribe, share, like, help with the algorithm. Help with the algorithm so that way I can deliver more videos because honestly, honestly, I do a lot of this for myself just because I enjoy programming and the for me to actually go through and teach it, for me to have to teach it, it makes me have to know it even better. So a lot of this is for me, but when it comes to what the content is or what I go through or that kind of thing, you know, some of the, you know, I've got um, Jim, Jim is really good. He, you know, he kind of gives me some ideas of things for me to program. So uh, I really do like to program what you guys are looking for, what you guys need. Uh, otherwise, I just kind of put out random stuff. Um, but again, for me to know that this is a value to you guys, then, you know, and I can see that through the number of views, through the number of shares, through the number of likes, then that way I can continue to do more and try to have uh, better, better content, better videos. All right. Today is Saturday. We've got a volleyball game today. And um, hope all y'all have a good day. I'm Eric. I'm out. Peace.